Wyatt McDaniel, um, co-owner of Pepper Tree Kitchen and Bath. Been here 28 years, started the company originally with the uh, original owners. Worked with them for about 26 years and about a year and a half, two years ago, I had the opportunity to purchase the company, uh, which we own now. It's been a great relationship and a great place to work for all that time. And I'm Steve Knorr. I've been here about 15 years. I'm a cabinet designer. I've got two design assistants working with me. Prior to that, my wife and I had our own cabinet business for about 12 years. Uh, we created a, prof a professional job and Pepper Tree started about the same time and created a wonderful company. Uh, we decided to, to, that I would join here and we'd close that business and it's been a, it was a real good choice. I've enjoyed working with uh, Wyatt. Uh, he's taken the company over the last couple years in a whole new direction and I'm really, really proud of our company. My job duties here at Pepper Tree are a wide variety of different things. What I enjoy the most though is not just owning the company, and that's, that's a great benefit, but um, I've always enjoyed the shop end of it, the scheduling, um, making sure the jobs go out on time, because we take a lot of pride in making sure our jobs go out on time. That's what I think sets us apart in the industry. And it's just the opposite for me. I'm really grateful that I don't have to work in the shop anymore. I enjoy the design process and people. So I'm, I'm happy that my job, my typical day is meeting with people, with clients, designers, and just talking about projects. The first thing I try to accomplish when I meet a new client is to identify their design style and design preferences. Um, a lot of people, when they come in, they know exactly what they want. Uh, a lot of people need a lot of help with that. So fortunately, we have this wonderful showroom with so many different displays. This is a, tra a transitional display that's kind of in the middle ground between contemporary and traditional. It's got cleaner lines, simpler moldings. It's just a, a nice clean line. Uh, increasingly, more and more of our clients like very sleek contemporary cabinetry, so we can do high gloss automotive finished painted cabinetry in any color. Uh, do a lot of that in white. We're using riffs on white oak veneers a lot. This, this particular display is wire brushed. It's been through our wire brushing machine. It's all drawers. I think drawers are a much better way to go with cabinetry on the base. I try to do most of my designs are all drawers on the bottom when possible. I like to add a open shelves just to break it up so it's not just everyday cabinetry everywhere. Uh, still have a calling for traditional cabinetry. We do a lot of white kitchens in Salt Lake. This kitchen is fun, it's a laundry room. It's got a craft center, a place for the dog. It's just a, a fun room. I get clients even building new homes that want cabinetry to look like it's 100 years old. So white's a great choice for that as well. This is an oak vanity. It would have a good place like in an Avenue's home. It feels like it could have been there originally. And a very traditional kitchen. A lot of, a lot of detail. That used to be the majority of our, our work. Now things are a lot more modern, cleaner lines, but we still do a fair amount of that. Here's a fun vanity we do quite often for our traditional clients. It's got radius doors on the front, staggered height and depth to give it a nice dimension. And moving over here is another transitional display, a little more modern than the one we looked at a minute ago. I like the wider rails on the door. I think that gives it a nice modern look. Um, a couple of different door styles in this display. This is a cleaner shaker look, which I really like. I um, also like to break it up with the open shelving, and so everything's not just ordinary, everyday cabinetry. And we tie that in with the top molding, uh, even being flat on this as well. It gives a real clean line. Moving on over here is our old uh, standby for Park City. Years ago, everything used to be naughty elder, stain and glaze, but this one is a rustic cherry. There's still some clients that still like this. However, a lot of our work is a lot more modern. Okay, upstairs here we have a rustic walnut kitchen, still another transitional kitchen for with a more rustic look, fits well in the mountains and Park City homes. Um, several pictures we have on display, that also helps. Uh, other than looking at the displays, we can look at our pictures, we can look at our website. Uh, all those things help. Um, here's uh, a much more contemporary kitchen. I like that we can integrate the refrigeration right in so you can't even tell it's there. 
love the pull-out pantry systems that we can use. Uh, this textured melamine is a new material, comes into 10 different colors, and it's a great, great product. Here's the refrigerator on this side. And then in this display, we have our glass doors with frosted glass, very contemporary base units, and over here, a real fun vanity. I really like this unit. And of course, the open shelves, I think, add a lot to that. Okay, once we feel like we've gathered enough information to know their design style, the next step would usually be to visit their home if it's a remodel, to get a feel for the style of their house. If it's a new home, we'll, visit, we'll review their, their plans right here with them in a meeting. And once we've gathered enough information there, uh, thanks to my, these young ladies here, my design assistants, they're both designers, and they're able to help with the CAD drawings and do as many revisions as, as necessary to get to a point where the client's comfortable with the design. Once we're there and we've selected finishes, we are ready to get it scheduled and give you an install date for your new cabinetry. The cabinet consists of basically a box and then the door or the fronts that go on the cabinet box. We'll walk through the process of the box. The box is made up of melamine. Melamine comes in a variety of different colors depending on what finishes on the doors is how we pick the different types of melamine that we use. The melamines come in in four by eight sheets that in turn is cut on a panel saw. We put the sheets up on the panel saw, it cuts all the parts out, whether it be standards, tops and bottoms, or stretchers. Once the parts are all cut out, they go into a cart for processing or they go onto the CNC. The CNC is a machine that will poke holes in it. it. It pokes the holes for the construction boring, it pokes the holes in for the adjustable shelves, it pokes the holes for the, for the hinge plates and for the drawer guides. So all, it, depending on what that particular box is gonna be doing, whether it be a wall or a base, is what the machine is known, it knows what to do for what holes to drill. Once it goes from there, it goes on down to the bander, the edge bander. The edge bander is a machine that applies the PVC banding. The cabinet assembler takes these parts, all these individual parts, whether it be a tops and bottoms, standards or backs of these cabinets, and he looks at an, an individual cabinet drawing that tells him what to do and how to assemble that box. I mean, obviously the holes are still kind of poked in it to give him guidance on how to put the hardware on. It makes his jobs easier because some of that process has already been done for him. We use four quarter material that is either, it's straight line gang ripped through a straight line machine saw that uh, then is planed and cut into individual sizes for styles and rails. They go on down to a machine and they get staged there. The panels are then cut out. The panels have to be cut and jointed and glued together. You know, that point in time, once we get all those together, we plane them, then we size them, and they go on down to the Ritter machine also to be uh, shaped with different types of cutters depending on the profile that the client has picked. So then we put the profile on the styles and rails, and then we put the profile on the panels. And then all those parts there, those five pieces, go back over to the assembly area where we assemble the door. Once the door is assembled, it then is sanded to proper thickness, and then it is sized to proper size. And then it goes over to another shaper that puts on an edge, whatever, depending on what edge the client has picked also. Once those parts are all done, and once all the veneer parts are done, they go into the sanding area, and uh, the job is then checked off again. That's what we do well, is we check all these parts off to make sure the parts make it to the sanding area properly and correct sizes before we spray them. So then the, the doors get sanded, the parts get sanded, then they go into the spray department. While those doors are being sprayed, then the cabinets are being built. Once that's all done, then it goes, we call it hanging. We hang all the doors onto the boxes. We put the drawer boxes into the cabinets. Um, some cabinets don't get drawer boxes, some just get doors, some get drawers and doors. So while they're being put together, we put the drawers in, put the doors on, um, then they go over to a quality control area. 
At that point in time, everything's starting to come together. We look at our paperwork, make sure that we have the proper finish on, make sure the proper door style is in place, make sure the proper banding's on the product, plus measure them and make sure the sizes are proper. We then use a very fine sandpaper. We scuff sand all of our material and we clean every door to make sure that the finish is as good as can be before we wrap the product up for quality control. We protect all of our doors with a paper coating and then we cellophane wrap every, jo every do cabinet, individual cabinet, before it gets loaded onto the truck to go out for assembly. We make sure every job is completely checked off, all the parts are on the truck and ready to go before we ship it out. Um, at that point in time, it's pretty much done. We're, you know, the process is done and you know, we're just waiting for countertops or the countertops get on and we just finish up. So that's really the gist of the installation from start to finish of the manufacturing of the cabinets to the installation process.